my name is Daniel. I'm the senior software engineer for Koai. So I've been working on you know, all of our products, Bistock 360, Serverless, Atomic Scope, and currently working with Document 360 team. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to come by. Um, so now we have Mike Budzinski, who will take you through the API management deep dive part two, where he's going to explain about some upcoming features. Um, so please welcome to the stage, Mike. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Mark Budzinski. I'm a program manager on Azure API Management. Today I'm going to talk about the new developer portal. For those of you who are not familiar with the concept of developer portal, it's an automatically generated website with the documentation of your APIs. And there are two groups of users that interact with developer portals, API providers and API consumers. On the API providers side, there are designers who customize and style the website to match the brand image and identity. There are content editors who make sure that all the content is relevant and up to date, and that includes tutorials, documentation, blog posts, maybe videos. There are also marketing managers who want to optimize the website for business success. On the other side are API consumers, and most notably this group includes application developers. Application developers first explore APIs, then learn how to use them, and finally, they build and then maintain applications that use those APIs. There are also business decision makers who approve use or purchase of APIs. API consumers are the target audience of API providers, and these are usually the visitors of the developer portals. So let's get straight to the point. Uh, who would like to see the new developer portal? Everyone, so you have to promise me one thing, that next site is very confidential. So please, what happens in this room stays in this room. <laughs> Do you promise? <laughs> so here it is. <laughs> I'm joking, you need to wait a few more minutes. Before we started implementation of the new developer portal, we conducted extensive research. Uh, both user and market research. We analyzed all the existing developer portals from the competition. We looked at other developer portals deployed out there in the wild. We listened to problems of our customers. We read academic research, how users interact with developer portals. We familiarized ourselves with latest web development trends and web design trends. Based on that knowledge, we decided that we need to build a new developer portal from scratch not just iterate on the existing developer portal. We wanted to provide you with the best experience and solution we could. First of all, the new developer portal is implemented with Jamstack technology. Jamstack stands for JavaScript, APIs, and markup. What it means in practice is that all the content is stored in markup documents, in our case, JSON, which are then compiled using static site generator into HTML pages. Those HTML pages fetch any dynamic data through APIs using client-side JavaScript. The result is a portal that is more performant, more secure, and more scalable. So for example, if you edit content or code of the portal, you need to run a publishing step which generates static files, which then you can host using any solution. So for example, a storage font. When you visit the website, you are first served those static files, and then additional data, in our case, for example, list of APIs or users' details, is fetched dynamically through APIs from the browser using JavaScript. By default, the, uh, the new portal is modern looking, so we wanted to design it in a way that will minimize the customizations that you need to perform. So to compare, this is the old developer portal, and this is the new default look of the new portal. That's the old and the new, <laughs> the old <laughs> and the new portal. Thank you. Of course, it's fully customizable using the built-in visual editor. For designers, we have created a special page which is called a styling guide where they can just go and configure all the visual elements, like for example, buttons, fonts, 
text, uh, colors, etc. So there's one central location that designers interact with. For content editors, there is a drag and drop editor where they can just adjust any elements throughout the portal uh, just in line. Next, the new portal is open source. It's already available on GitHub in a public repository. Uh, not only the code is public, so are the feature requests, bug reports, uh, history of the repository, and also the roadmap. As of yesterday, it is a public repository, so I highly encourage you to visit it. I'll give you a link shortly. Next, it comes built into your API management instance. Uh, the same way the old developer portal does, it's available under a new subdomain, your API management instance name, dot developer, etc. And uh, it will be upgraded with normal product releases along with you know, your API management instance. But if you have any specific requirements, you, if you want to implement any logic that is not supported by the developer portal out of the box, you, we got you covered. So what you can do is you can just fork the GitHub repository, edit the code yourself, and then self-host the developer portal. And because the developer portal is implemented with Jamstack, the self-hosting part is very easy. All you need is just a storage account where you can dump those HTML pages uh, into. Lastly, the new developer portal is DevOps friendly. You can automate all the deployments, migration between environments, backups and restores using ARM APIs. Without further ado, let's uh, go to the demo part and see how it works and looks in practice. <clears throat> so what you are seeing today uh, doesn't exist yet. Uh, it's, it will be released next week, next Wednesday. So you are absolutely the first audience to see it uh, live, not even uh, some, some of our even product members haven't seen it yet. So you can access the new developer portal just clicking on this button here in your API management instance. And you'll get an administrative view of your developer portal. During the demo, I will try to make my developer portal uh, branded to look similar to the Integrate website. So <clears throat> just to reiterate, there is, for example, a logo, this image, orange colors, some pictures of speakers, etc. So I will try to recreate that look, try to customize my developer portal. So that's the vanilla version of the developer portal. This is the landing page. Uh, there is a section about us that you can fill in. There is uh, featured APIs and customer references, etc. However, uh, I'm in the administrative view and my developer portal is not available to outside users. That's because I haven't published it yet. So all I need to do, is just click publish, and it takes a few uh, moments. And so let's, let's begin the styling work. So first, I would like to replace this image with the integrate image, but to do that, I need to I need to upload all the files which I prepared in advance. And as you can see, the upload has succeeded. So I will change this image to the integrate image like this. Next, I want to change my logo to integrate logo, which is bstock360. I'll change this color of this bar to our integrate gradient, stretch it. And then I will edit this gallery here with our wonderful speakers. So I've got API management speakers here. It's your API management dream team. Vladimir, who gave a talk on Monday. Then I will have Miao, who gave a talk today in the morning. Just stretch Miao a little bit. 
And then, of course, shameless plug. I will put myself here and also stretch myself. I can also use drag and drop editor, maybe remove some sections. I, I can delete this whole section here. And that's it. So I'll save my website. I can do it by either clicking on the save icon in the bottom uh, left corner or control S. And there is also a few other things that I would like to change. Uh, for example, there is this uh, layout concept, which uh, is kind of how pages are displayed. So there is another logo replaced with black Bistock logo. Save and go to this design view that I mentioned. In the design view, I will change the look of the buttons from yellow to our orange gradient. Stretch it again to fill the button. And as you can see, I don't like the black text on the button. It's not very legible. So I can also change the color of the text to white. And uh, I also need to edit the hover of the button. So whenever I hover over it, I also need to change that to white. So this is it. A few minutes. And I need to publish my website. It will take a few seconds. And then when I refresh it, I should be able to see the new version uh, branded with integrate look. So let me wait. Let's see. Not there yet. Oh, still loading. Yeah, here it is. So I went from, <laughs> thank you. I went from this to this in just, you know, three minutes or so. Of course, I can also edit some content on the website. Like I can change welcome to Contoso to welcome to Integrate UK. Or save it and publish it again. So let's go back to the published version. And this is the, sorry, the APIs here, API reference. I have two APIs published, demo conference and the default echo API. When I click on the demo conference API, I get this uh, API reference where I can see a similar view to the old developer portal, the list of operations and all the details about the API. I can also open the developer console and test my API right from the portal. As you can see, I received 200 OK response, and I got a response with speakers because I used the get speakers method. So all the speakers of the conference of our test API. But let's say that I would like to make some changes to this logic. So I would like to make my developer console talk not to my API management instance, but to my sandbox environment. So that's something that has not been possible in the previous version of the developer portal, but is possible with the new version of the developer portal. But that's a change that requires more work. We don't support it by default. But what you can do, as I mentioned, you can use the self-hosted version of the portal, which I already happen to have on my computer. So I will edit the code of the portal live and try to make this uh, developer console talk to my sandbox environment. So to do that, I need to go to console, console operation TypeScript file, and I need to provide my sandbox URL in the constructor and replace it with my API management host name. So that's it, just two lines of changes. What I need to do now is I need to run this uh, deployment script, which will generate the, stat the, the static files and then deploy them, upload them to the cloud, uh, to a storage account. And of course, uh, this takes a few moments. And uh, what, what we are using to host our website is just a storage account. You can also put, for example, CDN in front of it if you want to distribute it globally easily. 
or you can use any other hosting method you'd like to use. This is the approach if you, for example, would like to add new widgets to your portal, if you would like to change the behavior of the portal, or maybe if you would like to opt out of the automatic updates that we push as API management to the engine of your managed version of the portal. So let's, uh, let's wait for this to happen. Okay. So this is the publishing step, it's generating all the files. And now those files should be uploaded to my storage count. Yeah. As you can see, all the images and all the pages are being uploaded right now. As you can see, the JPEGs, CSS, HTMLs, and it's done. So now, if I visit my storage account page and refresh it, I get my self-hosted version of the developer portal. Exactly the same look because I connected it to my API management instance. And let me try the APIs out. So just to remind, my goal was to make the API talk to the sandbox environment and previously we received a whole list of speakers as a response. But now I'm seeing hello integrate. This is sandbox. So with just two lines of code, I changed the behavior of my portal. I changed the behavior of the developer console to talk to a completely different environment. And of course, a number of changes that you can do is practically unlimited. You can create your own versions of the portals. You can have multiple developer portals that are quite independent of each other, or you can just do whatever you want to do. Coming back to the presentation, we, uh, so the self-hosted version of the portal has gone into preview yesterday. The GitHub repository is already publicly available. The managed version of the portal is going into preview next Wednesday. So that button that I clicked on my API management instance, you don't have it yet. You will have it next week. So I highly encourage you to try the new portal then. Before GA, we want to provide you with all the scenario-based feature parity. So all the features that, all the functionality that is uh, built into the old developer portal. For example, the preview version doesn't support online identity providers like Facebook, Twitter. It doesn't support AD, AD, B2C. It doesn't support authentication delegation yet. So the general availability is planned for autumn, November, October, and we'll work hard to give you the feature parity. After that, we'll be working on new features for the developer portal on top of what, what we already did. So any feature requests, you can submit them, for example, on the GitHub repository, and we'll be hopefully able to address them or at least see what your feedback is. And then if you want to contribute to the project, you're, of course, more than welcome to open pull requests. It's just a GitHub repository, open source, that you can contribute to. And lastly, for all the other API management resources, please go to aka.ms slash where we have a list of links which you can explore. Thank you very much.